Have you ever wondered if neurofeedback can help your child with ADHD? Well, you want to stay tuned to learn just how this game changer therapy can help your child. Hi, I'm Dr. Roseanne, and I'm a mental health trailblazer. And join me as we have real conversations about real solutions to kids' problems. And today, we're talking about one of my favorite natural solutions for ADHD. And it's one of the first things I started using to really change the lives of kids with ADHD. And it's neurofeedback. So let's dive into what it is and how it can help your child. Hi, welcome to It's Gonna Be Okay with Dr. Roseanne, and I am Dr. Roseanne, and today we're talking about one of my favorite therapies, neurofeedback. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to the episodes about what neurofeedback is, please go back. There's a whole series on them, and they're really informative. If you want to watch and learn and see, then I would definitely recommend that you watch my free webinar. You can go to www.drrosanne.com forward slash webinar and is a whole webinar all about neurofeedback and it's free and it's available to watch at your leisure in the comfort of your home. So let's start off by talking about the ADHD brain. So as I've talked about before, there are many reasons why somebody struggles with focus. But today we're going to talk about what does an ADHD brain actually look like? I think that's really important because we don't really understand the mechanisms, right? And especially because ADHD really almost occurs across a continuum. Some kids are inattentive, but may be very pleasant and easy to get along with. Other kids may be impulsive and moody and cranky and emotional, and they're sort of everywhere in between, and yet they all still struggle with ADHD. And why is that? Because they have a dysregulated brain and that patterning of dysregulation is pretty clear when I do a QEG brain map, which I use for diagnostics and also that determines what protocol people need for their neurofeedback. We're going to get into that. But when you're looking at an ADHD brain, what does it look like? So if you can, if you're driving <laughs> and you're listening, you can imagine, you know, put your put your hand into a fist and at your, your knuckles is the front of your um, uh, brain and that's the frontal lobe. And in the frontal lobe, that is what looks different in the brain of a person with ADHD. And what happens is in terms of brainwave pattern, because the QEG what it does is you put a cap on, it measures the surface electrical activity of the brain, and it gives us a visual representation of what the brain is doing, what's overstimulated, what's understimulated. And you can see over the structures and you can see brain communication. How cool is that? Right? I love, I love it. It's, it's just amazing. I mean, I did one the other day and it's the same thing everybody always says. They're like, holy cow, I can't believe you, we didn't even talk. I didn't even go over their stuff. I'm like, here's the brain map. Here's what it is. And we wind up talking about all this other stuff because it just cut right down to it. It was so clear what was going on with this kid. And they came to me thinking with straight ADHD. And it wasn't. It was dyslexia. And it really wasn't ADHD because in the frontal lobes, what you should see is too many unfocused brain waves and not enough focus brain waves. That is classic ADHD pattern. Now, this child still struggled with focus because they were dyslexic and they they had a lot of unfocused brain waves, but the language centers weren't working properly. And you could really see that in brain communication. So neurofeedback, the first step in the process most of the time is some level of checking, right? So even when people can't come into me, I still do statistical at analysis when they get their equipment, we do brain checks where we're looking at certain regions that we suspect based on what we hear, right? So if a certain region in the brain isn't working, they can't do certain things. It's so easy to understand when you break it down, what area is understimulated, what is overstimulated, 
And that dysregulated brain pattern is slightly different depending on the symptoms you're seeing, right? That hyperimpulsive child, that inattentive child, um, but temperament is also in there and you can't see that in a brain map. So let's go into what is neurofeedback? How does it work? It's a mysterious process for people. Some people think something's coming through the wires. It doesn't. So at a really, really high level, simple, simple, what is it? The brain is getting reinforced to produce the right healthy combination of brain waves. That is it. The computer and what we do is EEG neurofeedback, whether you're working in center or fully remote, and we work with people all over the United States. Um, and when you're doing the neurofeedback, you're hooked to the computer. I've already determined a protocol based on the brain check or QEG. We the brain then changes what it's doing to get reinforcement. What is a reinforcement? It's a movie playing. It's different visual and auditory reinforcements depending on what equipment you have. Within two to three seconds, the brain instantaneously <laughs> produces a height, the right combination of brain waves and it starts working out. Sessions are about somewhere around 30 minutes. And most people in our six month program, it's two to three times a week. Some people do intensive. We do a lot of intensives where people fly out. Um, typically we only take about one or two people a month and they come for one or two weeks, depending on the clinical issue. But some people also do intensive neurofeedback at home. I have an adult doing intensive neurofeedback at home with a trauma history and is doing amazing. Um, it's always really exciting to see people's lives change. And I feel so blessed that I'm able to be part of that journey every day. So let's talk about the benefits of neurofeedback and what happens when actually, you know, how does it reduce symptoms? Like what happens, right? So it's the simple process of measurement and reinforcement. It's pleasant. They're hooked to a computer. They're doing two to three sessions a week. You're typically doing at least 40 sessions and changes are lasting over time. Now, most of my people with ADHD, some of them are on ADD meds, some of them aren't, but typically their goal is to come off. Some it's to reduce, but most of my people, I have a family right now, um, they're actually almost in shock <laughs> at how much their behavior is improving. And one mom said to me, she has a set of twins and she said that she's never, ever not had the school call. Um, and so they've been doing neurofeedback since the beginning of the school year and first time in their um, nine years of school that nobody's called to complain. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and, you know, I had this... Um, personal moment yesterday where two days ago where I somebody in my life is a service provider knows knows what I do um, and I got asked to be in a very very big um, docu film about natural solutions for ADHD and I was telling this person all about it and then they told me that they put their child on medication and I was like what are you doing you're gonna hurt your kid's brain and they got, they got upset with me and I was like, hello, you've known me for years and you're bringing this to me and you're asking my opinion. I have to tell you. So I shot all the research in, I gave all that. Um, and his response was, you know, Roseanne, what was I going to do? The school was on my back and I get it. I get it. One of our employees said that's the only reason why they started medication because the school was on their back. And, and I'm not nagging on teachers, but I just want parents to know, like, if you watch the episode or listen to the episode with Gail, where she said, you know, what did I do when my teacher told me to medicate my kid? You know, she set off on ghoul is what she said. And she found me and her kid didn't have ADD. And there's a lot of reasons why the brain is dysregulated. So if you are going to medicate, you should really know if that's really the right the right solution at the right time. And most of the time it's not. So let's talk about how it reduces symptoms. It's pretty amazing. So one, what it does for most people is it's improving attention and focus. And please know you can go to drrosanne.com forward slash my blogs. There's, I have tons of blogs. There are over 3,000 peer-reviewed studies, tens of thousands of research studies showing the efficacy of neurofeedback for a variety of clinical conditions. But many 
for ADHD because ADHD kids are easy to measure. So in these research studies, there's one that I uh, frequently cite um, in my literature that that uh, about 91% of the people in this particular study showed improvements in attention and focus with neurofeedback. That's pretty amazing. And the American um, Pediatric Association recommends neurofeedback um, and says it's a level one intervention, the same as medication. And that's according to their independent survey of the research. And that's since 2012, they've been saying that it's as effective as medication, which is pretty amazing. And yet nobody's hearing about it. So I think we have to talk about what are the things that improve. So attention and focus, you know, when your kid can alert they actually can hear you and maybe start a task. It's really important. So one of the other things neurofeedback can do is improve it, impulse control and hyperactivity. And behavioral disinhibition, stopping a response, is the actual foundation for all learning. It is particularly the foundation for executive functioning. If you can't put the brakes on, how can you do anything else? So this is going to affect transitioning. It's going to affect starting and completing a task. It's going to, you know, if you happen to be one of those annoying impulsive kids and hello, I had, you know, one of those until we did a lot of intervention. It's tough to have an impulsive kid. They get in trouble. They're more likely to be identified. You have a greater portion of males being impulsive. Um, girls tend to be more inattentive. So that's one of the ways neurofeedback can really, really help. And um, yesterday I had somebody fly out um, for the second time um, and they've been doing neurofeedback pretty intensively from a, um, a Western state and it's the little guy. And so he was so impulsive that all his mom, she did was she didn't tell him don't touch things. He couldn't alert properly. So she would say, touch this, touch that. It was the opposite, right? She's such a good mom. Love her. What a great gut she's got doing. I was like, do you understand? You're basically should be like a therapist. You're doing such a good job. And we couldn't believe the difference in his impulse control from just a few weeks ago. They've really been doing a lot of, of sessions, probably three to four a week. Um, so young brain, it's a very young child intensive sessions, a parent who's really following through with the behaviors and, and teaching him about putting the brakes on in such a beautiful way. Oh, such a great job. He's really showing the difference is pretty exciting. Um, and, you know, she's so adorable because she said to me, I just love this. I'm such a faith-based person. Um, she said, you know, we were doing this and it was about four weeks in and she said, you know, Jesus, I know you sent me to Dr. Rowe. I'm going to get pretty reclaimed. Um, And she said, um, but I'm not seeing anything. And the next day she said it was like a light switch. And I was like, oh, you know, having faith is important. But she was doing the work too, which is awesome. So, okay. So another benefit of neurofeedback is it's safe and non-invasive, right? So we're not going to get into all the nitty gritty of the dangers of psychiatric medication. I have these blogs on it. I'll share the links. Medication, 100% of the time, ADHD medication, 100% of the time has side effects. Sometimes I had a conversation this morning and she said, I was medicating my kid with ADHD. I had no idea what the side effects were because they've been on medications for so long thought they were really benefiting until we started doing neurofeedback and backing off almost completely off the medication that I didn't see the side effects of restricted eating, um, irritability and the other things. She just couldn't see it because she was focusing on that they could focus in school and they can focus better. Now, another mother who said, like, you know, they, they actually screenshot and share with me all the time, like the positive things that are sent. She's never had that happen. Um, neurofeedback research says that the changes are lasting over time. So medications don't create lasting change. It's a temporary neurofeedback trains the brain to go into a healthy state and stay there. We can certainly amplify that with diet, some of these beautiful interventions that I'm talking about with parents, you know, different types of therapy, um, supplements, you know, I love my magnesium, um, and other things to help the brain work better. Super important. The number 
five benefit that I is just overall benefit. When you do neurofeedback, your processing improves, your brain calms down, your mood improves. It's pretty fascinating to see some of the other things that sort of happen. Like I'm training for this, but then they can, their sports improve, right? That's always a top one. I don't always tell everybody, but if I have a super athlete, like parents will come in and be like, well, he couldn't participate in any sports, but we still made him because he didn't have any friends because he's so impulsive. And now he's got more friends. What do you actually can do grow well in sports? Is that something neurofeedback helps with? And I'm like, well, you know, last time Italy won the World Cup, they had a whole neurofeedback team doing neurofeedback and biofeedback with them. So there's a lot of benefits. These are just a few. And I want people who feel like when that teacher says, you've got to medicate, you've got to medicate. And even a personal friend of mine chose to do that. And I was like, holy cow, you know, is this, I can't believe this. And, and please know it's not somebody I talk to every day, right? Because my friends that talk to me every day, they message me and they're like, hey, the teacher said this, what do I do? You know, and and uh, we use each other for resources and, and I feel blessed to have so many wonderful, uh, tight women in my life. But when you feel like you're out of hope, I really want you to consider neurofeedback. It's time tested. It works. It's easy. Yeah, it's a commitment, but it's not forever. And when you actually, I know a lot of people will say things, you know, like what are common objections? Like my husband's not going to agree or my partner is not going to agree. Go and listen to that episode. People say it's expensive. It's a lot cheaper than even one therapy session a week. It's a lot cheaper. One therapy session a week is typically over $10,000. So you have to look at where you're going to put your investment. It's safe. It's natural. It's not going to harm your child. You just want to get a really experienced um, provider. And if you're looking to work with us, we take a limited amount of people because we love you up. And, you know, you're really looking for expert guidance. This is what I do. You can apply to work with us and it starts with a solution match or you go to www.drrosanne.com forward slash help. And, you know, I hope this was helpful. I get so many questions. Please go back, listen to the other episodes, dive into our blogs, dive into the, the research that I talk about. But please consider this for a child, teenager, adult, Neurodivergent brains are awesome. And what I love about neurofeedback is it enhances awesomeness. It doesn't have those negative features that psychiatric medications can. And yes, they can damage the brain. And I hope that freaks you out. And I don't mean to shame you. I want this to be a point of enlightenment. So if you love and care about anybody with ADHD, whether it's you, because I hope you love yourself, your spouse or your kid, go ahead and apply to work with us. And we would love to help you.